Hey tubers, me again. And you know what? When you get an intro like this, it usually means that, yep, you guessed it, it's going to be another long video. So, I have 28 clips that are slowing down my phone, phone something terrible. So I need to take and get those up on YouTube. It's going to end up being a two-parter, sorry about that, but it's still going to end up being like an hour long. It's uh, basically start to finish, nuts and bolts of everything that you need to do if you're working on a, a steel uh, Mike Sierra 192 Tango. It's a, what do you call it, like a, a, a tree saw where the guys climb up, you know, use the rigs and whatever, it's real top handle, lightweight. You got a lot of power, so anyways. 28 clips coming your way. And then um, you'll see in the comments after a couple of days here, I'm gonna get the, what do you call it? I'm gonna put a timeline of each individual uh, project that gets attacked during this video so you can skip through and just get to the ones that you want. So, all right, for right now, enjoy the video. Hopefully, uh, you know, the air condition is not screwing this up too bad. But yeah, enjoy the video, leave a comment. Somebody better leave a like. <laughs> there's 28 clips there's got to be something that you like out of that or there's no hope for you so all right guys we'll see you in a little bit hey tubers it's me again so i returned that pb 770 blower back and he was so happy that he gave me something else to work on we see a lot of these this is a steel Mike Sierra 192 Tango. The T stands for this top handle. We got 193s and 192s, and they have a top handle. So, anyways, and you always take what the customer tells you with a grain of salt, okay? So he said on this particular one that it runs for about 10 or 15 minutes and then it then it just dies or he can't keep it running, whatever. But I'm noticing, let me see if I'm, I'm already zoomed out as far as I can go. I'm noticing that, no, uh, I didn't even try to start it. I just want to make sure the basics. But by, if I take and I put something on here and I'm trying to, roll the chain the chain's locked up I'm trying to pull the the brake off of it and the brakes broke so that's got nothing to do with with it running I mean it would start but it would be like you know the brake is on but let's just see if uh, we can try to figure out what's going on we are going to end up tearing this whole thing down because these things are famous for getting a rip in the boot underneath of here. But you got to, in order to access it all, there's, there's quite a few stages to the process. This plate right here on the top there, that'll pop right off. You just get a screwdriver underneath of there, undo the two latches on each side. Uh, there's the other one right there. Come on. And it, it'll just wiggle out. Can you see? See what I'm doing? That piece wiggles out. All the fuel lines and everything are up on top of there. So if there was a pinhole or something, you might be able to see gas up here. I don't know. Good girl. So we're gonna start tearing this thing apart. I'm gonna see if I can't find the best angle so I can just start zipping out T27s and everything for you guys. And let's dissect this thing. Okay, hold on. Okay, so I guess this is about as good as it's gonna get. Um, so just to make it easier to spin around and stuff, I wanna take this bar and chain off. But if you guys know anything about these, uh, most chainsaws is, you gotta pry this out to get it off. But if that brake is on, it's holding down on the outside of that clutch. 
The only thing that I'm going to like maybe have going for me is that if there's enough oil soak or grease or whatever because this hasn't been taken apart that I might be able to take and pry this thing off. Now another little idiosyncrasy about these uh, 192s, 193Ts is that usually the nut stays with the side of this case. So, oops, hopefully the camera won't fall over. Um, you're gonna loosen this up and then just, let's just cross our fingers. I'm going in between the legs of the tripod here. See, okay, well that one, this one came off. Sometimes they stay with the machine. So, I'm gonna tip it right here. Push that handle over. I'm prying in the back here to kind of get it to to come loose. So, all right, I'm getting lucky already. Must be because you guys are watching. And this is come this comes up and out. So that's probably what helped it. All that down inside of there and then maybe just maybe there's so much crap back behind here that that's why this doesn't want to work but we're gonna have to undo this cover here and see what's going on with that linkage find out why that brakes not releasing so that's neither here nor there for right now um, I think we should be able to just pick it up move it forward Lift the chain off the bar. I'm just doing it from the tip, you guys. There's the chain. We don't need to see that for a little bit. And the bar will just come out of there. So, all right, what are we looking at? It's kind of messy. I ran out of carb spray. I'm gonna have to go get carb spray to clean everything in order to take and Put it back together. That's for sure, for sure. I need to get in here, and we're gonna we're gonna look at everything. Why does it it runs runs for 15 minutes and then it stops? Runs for 15 minutes and then it stops. I'm suspecting that maybe there's an air leak, bad vent, maybe. Why would it run for 15 minutes? And then stop. I'm gonna take and pull this exhaust off because we want to look at the piston. There's that. There's that. Let's see if we can see the see together. All right, I'm holding it. Does not look terrible as far as being, you know, clogged up with carbon. Or where are you guys? There you go. Rings don't look bad. Yeah. It should run. Maybe a little bit of scoring on there. A stuck ring maybe that's what we can see I see one big score double rings all right let's just start ripping this bad chicken apart we want, we're gonna we're gonna basically strip it down to everything so let me go like this take you out this is a rubber mounted bolt over here on the handle t27 Got a little grommet on the inside of it. So that'll make that part free up there. I think these are 20s up here. Nope. Yeah, those are like, those are 20s. I'm gonna have to get those. We're gonna undo the handle. All of this stuff. Side cover. Try not to camera knock the camera over. Look at this. There's four of them. Primer looks new. Let's 
three, there's, there's four for this cover. Yeah, dirty girl. I definitely need to get some carb spray in here. Has decent compression. I can feel it. I can feel it. Oh, I'm going to get this handle off of here. Is there one in there? Supposed to be one in there. Nope. Need to undisconnect it from down here. Slide on out of there. See how it's spring mounted? I just slid that up and out of there. Let me find the right ones for these right here, you guys. In my little handy dandy DeWalt case. This looks like a 20. Yeah. Alright. Let's see what's going on. Oh, what the heck? Too big. It's still too big. I wear my glasses. I still can't see. Right. We're pulling this handle apart. Like I said, we're just disassembling everything. Don't let these linkages and stuff scare you, you guys. It was just like, even if you're like, you're not making a YouTube video or you know posting videos video yourself disassembling stuff if you're not exactly sure of how it's gonna end up uh, going back together that's just that's a great way of doing stuff you know there we go this one over here right there oopsie sorry That screw right up there at the top. That's the one I just took out. So now this handle's getting ready to be able to lift off. I, I want to disconnect all these linkages. The one right over here, that will make it free. Like uh, from the carburetor. Use all these little triggers and things. We need to wash all this stuff up. Springs, remember how those go? My alarm just made that stop. So, we got all the stuff in here. On and off switches in there. These just, we got some plugs. Just got to remember how they go back. If I could just unplug them right there, that would be nice, but it doesn't look like it. So. There we go. There's that one. Got another one. Right here. That can stay on there like that. These are two eight millimeter bolts. Or nuts, I should say. And I use that little bad boy for my impact. Only when we're taking them apart, guys. And where is my, I have two of these. I got a Harbor Freight and I got a Snap-on. See how I ground them off? And any of you guys that work on steel, you know that, that that tolerance right there is very close. So you gotta make a specialty tool that'll, so that they'll just drop right in there. See that? So I use this, I got a Snap-on one, because that's the only Snap-on tool I own. Take this nut off. Take the other one off. Two eights right there. And let's see. That choke right there. Or the choke handle, I should say. Like, how do I get a how do I replace one of those? Well, you go and you buy one and you stick a screwdriver up underneath of there and you just pry it out. It'll pop right off. And it has like a little set 
on the inside of their little indent so that when it goes back on the shaft that it goes back on there the correct way so let's get this get this little piece off of here come on baby I'm trying to work around the camera I'm trying not to knock over the camera there we go that cover plate comes off you can try to put it back on like that later on but it's not going to work it's got to go like that okay so here we go probably going to need to take and burp that one is oil top one is the oil nope that's the fuel and I don't want to burp that other one there so now I'm going to take and pull this carburetor out see that fuel line right there most of the stuff you can just take and do with your fingers if you don't burp that gas tank then fuel is going to be running all over the place so and the cool thing about this one is like that return whatever get these parts out of here it just sticks right up in the, over here see where it's kind of peeing a little bit right there at the end of my finger let's see and you put your carburetor back in you've got to make sure that this little piece right here goes right in that hole right there so the carburetor looks new I wonder what's going on here somebody worked on this and just couldn't get it going I don't think this is one that I've touched this hasn't said anything okay this cover this metal piece right here that's important you don't want to lose that and I'll show you something here in a second you can't really put that in there the wrong way because if you look right up there right there on the top it actually says top so that goes back in there like that now in the very center you see that little ring take and put your baby finger in there push hard and twist that ring is just like it's to keep the the shape of the intake once you got it in there so you don't want to lose that and now to get the handle off you can take finger or a screwdriver if, if, as often as you can I like to use my finger because I don't want to take and cut or rip any of these boots this is the intake boot and I'm just pushing it through so it's in there on the it's still in there on the other side and I am fully disconnected from everything pull the filter out there's that this gas line see it from the back right here I gotta pull that off can I pull it off or push it through yeah let's push it through actually I'm just gonna leave it back there because it's holding the the gas line up could probably just do this yeah phone got hot already you guys it's not like the last video I did I'm gonna pinch this off so hey so you see me ripping this thing apart I'm gonna go through I'm gonna undo all these bolts up here and then from the bottom and we're gonna take the engine out and I want to look for because I suspect an air leak um, I want to check the seals um, up here and see if I can't come up with some kind of a way to uh, maybe attempt to do a leak down this is the little plate that holds that uh, boot in and they're famous for ripping right there but this one's not ripped so that's a good thing let's take and just reach in here and lift it up there that's it they're famous for ripping right here I've replaced probably I don't know six seven of them but this one's good so yeah, we're going to go and check the seals, see what's going on, and get this baby cleaned up. All right, I'll be back. So it's 104 degrees out here, you guys. That's why my phone keeps crapping out. But anyways, hey, if you ever wanted to see what a... <laughs> uh, MS-192T looks like when it's all taken apart, here's a clutch. <coughs> 
<laughs> oh, thank you, everybody. Bless me. His body. I need to wash all this stuff up before you can put it back. There's the oil pump. Handle parts, pieces. Parts is pieces. There's the bottom of the cylinder case. There's the cylinder. It's got some pretty decent scoring up in there. Hold on. It's going to try to focus. Can, it, it should not have been enough to make it. See, there's the best one. It should not have been enough to, you know, to make it like run and then stop because the rings, the rings themselves, watch when I take and I push them, they're not stuck. They're not stuck. So they should have been. Oh, the bottom one is. My bad. The bottom one is stuck. So it should have been making some compression. Um, yeah, maybe that's it. So that's a big score. Big score right there. Big score right there. So I'm going to order this up. I think I think I paid like 25 bucks. I rebuilt one not too long ago. And this guy, I talked to him again yesterday. I told him, I said, like, dude, you got to, like, I want to see a little bit more oil in your equipment. He told me, no, he's like, he just mixes exactly one can of whatever he uses um, with one can of his oil. And he doesn't want to come off of that. So, anyways, the biggest thing is, like, all right, let me see. This is, this is cross, no, this is loop scavenging. So that the actual handle you saw like where I took the the intake manifold off that's right down here Here's a spark plug down here, and then the exhaust is right over there on that side So what happens is You really want to see this the piston goes up my, my finger my finger is is going to be the piston so when the, the skirt never never gets out of the way uh, here, so like uh, if you're looking through the the exhaust It'll go like this and you'd see the top of the piston that never happens on the intake side you guys Video stop because of overheating Okay, I turned the light off so when the when the piston goes up Like that where my where my finger is when that goes up that creates a suction down here and the exhaust or the the fuel mixture vaporized goes in through here and then when you look up inside of there you see these see that port right there let's see if the light will work for a second you see that port and that port right there that's how the fuel mix gets from the crankcase down here from down on down underneath to here it gets up into the cylinder so when the piston comes down new fuel goes up these sides and into there and then it helps to push out some of the exhaust and that's how it goes bang 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 every single time that the piston goes to the top it fires and it makes power that's what's desirable about two strokes but they're not very uh, fuel efficient or they're not very clean so anyways so anyways the nuts and bolts of it is I suspect that I'm right that these seals are dead they're all cooked and it's very hard to to see but like, they're just they're just not in great shape anymore there's little pieces coming off of them that is not permatext so I'm gonna order up some new one I'm gonna get a new piston new cylinder uh, rings all that fun stuff and then I'm gonna order up some new seals and then put it back together but right now this thing needs some Dawn dish detergent and a brush and I got to clean all these parts back up. So it is what it is. This one is going to take a few days before I can finish the video. So later. Okay, you guys. So I'm over there and I'm washing up all the parts. And once I get all the grease and the crud off, I think I may have discovered the Holy Grail. So this is... Come on, baby. That's the handle, okay? Remember how I showed you before, like where this right here uh, runs down into this piece, which was not ripped, which goes into the intake engine. And then 
into the intake part of the engine, which is right there, okay? And then this little line right here, that's a pulse line that runs off of pressure from right here on the side of the crankcase. That little port, you see the hole is in there. Focus, baby. Right down in there, and it comes out, and it pulses this line. <laughs> Text message. Sorry. It pulses this line up into the carburetor. You kind of see how that would go? So, look what I found after I scrubbed it up. Yeah, there's a little bit of a burn mark on there. See it? Can you see that right on there? Let me put my hand back there. There you go. Oh, hell away from me. So watch when I twist it. See where it's kind of crinkled or whatever? Can you see that hole? Here. Let me do this. Let me do this. Let me give you a good visual. Right down in there. See, see how the hook goes inside? That's a rip. Yeah, let's try to get up real close. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Okay, there. Here's the hook. That's what I found. Right in there. It's going right inside the hose. So we need to take and replace this hose for sure when we go and put everything back together. And that's one of those things that you can overlook because it's inside. When it's, when it's sitting on the engine, unless you go looking for it, because it goes like this. Hold on. Because it goes like this, you wouldn't see it. That's how it goes. And the rip, the rip is on the inside. Isn't that crazy? Okay, this is Sharon. I'm out. And so we figured out what's going on with the chain brake is, let's just say that's a two pound space. That's three pounds worth of crap. When you put three pounds of crap in a two pound space, something's got to give. And it was the brake. So we are... Hold on. Hold on. Ooh. There we go. Now it's back to the way that it works. Hold on, maybe I can load it without killing myself. Mm. Come on, baby. There. Now it's working. Okie doke, that's what it is, three pounds in a two pound space. Okay, ordering up the parts guys, there will be more when the video continues. We'll be doing the reassembly. I took all that stuff and I washed it up. <clears throat> so it's all, any any parts that could go back in, just so that I you know don't have bolts and stuff, not too much state stuff laying around. Um, that's what I did. So I just like partially put it back together. That's where we are. All right, we'll see you on the reassembly. Okay, guys. Hey, the parts came in. Uh, thanks to H and H for uh, getting me the the, what the the seals for the the crank. That only took us about three or four days. So, anyways, hey, here's one thing that that I wanted to show you. You're gonna be you're, so you're trying to do this. And now you're going to say, well, how do I know which way that, you know, the piston goes in? It either goes like this or it goes 180 degrees. Well, since I have the old one here, I'm going to be able to show you. I put that one back in there the wrong way so that you'll, you'll be able to notice, you know, like you'll, you'll catch the mistake if, if you're just not sure of yourself. Okay, so normally like when it's sitting in the machine, they're facing back. The, the spark plug is back here by your knuckles, you know, because you're holding the saw like this. Okay, it's so like that's going to be the intake boot. Here's the air, that little air pulse line that goes. This is on the old one, but it's back behind there. Here's the new one. It's still back behind there because what happens is there's about a ten thousandths clearance of when that, 
that flywheel goes on there. So double check that. Otherwise, you're going to have to pull the flywheel and you have to start all over. You don't want to be, be doing that. So anyways, back to what I was saying. So if you look down here inside the cylinder, this is put in 180 degrees wrong. And one thing, you know, when it, it goes in there, like, well, you know, it looks, I mean, like, there's there's the ports and everything. It's got, you know, room off the skirts and blah, blah, blah. But no engineer in his right mind is going to go. And if you can look down inside of there, I'm going to turn the light on. I hope this thing doesn't die. It's so bloody hot out here. Hold on, guys. If you look right down inside, see that little semicircle right there in the very or it's in the very center of your screen that's the dowel pin that holds you know the ring in the place so that it doesn't spin around while it's operating no engineer would take and put that dowel pin right there inside the port this piston in here is 180 degrees off so when you're looking at when you're looking at the skirting and everything the way the way that it goes make sure that the dowel pins are going to be staying on flat surfaces not flat but you know on clear surfaces where they're not going to snag so that they don't snag in any ports or anything like that and then you'll be good be good to go and remember that you're doing this basically upside down and inverted because this would be like this and like this but it doesn't it's not like that when you're in when you're doing putting the the crankshaft and the piston in there so i'm going to stick that in there put the cases back together and hopefully the heat will cooperate and save the light i'll be back oh what i use for uh assembly lube because i run this in my engines i love this stuff um this is what I use for assembly loop. I just like, there's no such thing as putting too much on there. And just make sure you got clean surfaces when you're taking in uh, actually doing the, the ceiling down here. Um, I have red RTV Permatex and I also have the, the black stuff. But I'm, I put the high temp red. I'm going to put the high temp red in there. So, all right, guys, I'll be back. Okay, you guys, the piston is in. It's all set up. Um, mm -hmm. the, the bottom is all cleaned. The bottom half of the crank is getting ready to go in. Um, just doing a dry fit, making sure that everything's all clear before I take and I put the, the seals in there. The bearings are into their little, their little slots the way that they're supposed to be. But you're looking at this this cover or the the bottom half of the, the crankcase and you just say like well you know what it fits this way and it will also fit this way so and I didn't take a video so I don't know how to put it back on so like well let me let me save you the trouble here it does go on both ways but on the the part that has the longest shaft this is like where the clutch and everything will go if you that hole that's manufactured into the bottom of the crankcase if you look on your saw like where that uh where the uh what do you call it that like the worm drive and everything will go for the oiler there's that hole right there see it it's right smack dead in the center that hole right there is to receive the screw to take and hold the oil the oil pump so it's got to go on like this okay so I'm gonna get the RTV out and I'm gonna take and set this up and then um, torque everything down and start putting the engine back into this chassis I have to take the chassis apart because I put all the clean parts back on so it'll be a little bit but we're making progress here you guys okay you guys I don't know if you really need to see me put you know the RTV into place but i just wanted to show you a little tip trick that i've been doing ever since back when i was a chef I actually you know this from chef chris this is a piece of wax paper parchment paper any kind of real stuff paper will will work and basically it's just cut on a like a long rectangle triangle or whatever you whatever you call that an obtuse triangle one side is way longer than the other so anyways, you take it and you curl it. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. So you, you curl it back on itself in order to get this 
perfect little, what do you call it? Like, a, you make it like a little pastry bag. Let's see if I can kind of get it close. I'm looking off to the side because I can't see through the, the camera. Anyway, it ends up looking like this, you guys. You put the RTV in there and then you close it up and you and then you you squeeze it out the end right here to that little point will get you wherever it is that you need to take and put the put the RTV so here's the one that I have already made in order to take and put it in here so it's so, you can do it so precise let me make sure I got a good focus that wherever I, I want to take and I put this I mean because there's that groove everything right there I don't have to be real sloppy and go you know go crazy with it I can put it right exactly where I where I want it to go you see that it's not getting all messy or all sloppy I don't have you know a big giant excess amount and the wax paper is just because it makes it so it's super strong so that it's not gonna rip and blow out so I mean you can get you can get pretty stinking pre precise with it. Just like it's just like writing with with icing on a cake, and I just do it with this. So that's a little tip trick that I use for putting uh, the gasket maker right exactly. Am I in the picture? Right exactly where I want it. And I'm not chasing a big mess because it's all over the place. It's also nice because, like, once you open up a thing of RTV and you don't have the lid or, you know, the hole's too big and f for whatever the reason is, you know, like, it's never the same as, like, when you very first open it. By, you, by using this little gizmo, it'll always be the same. So I'm going to take and put the, the crankcase on, let the stuff set up a little bit, and then stick it back together and... I'll be back. Thanks for watching, guys. Okay, guys, I'm getting close. Here's the the old seal. These are, uh, I think they're 12, yeah, they're 12 by 22 by 4.5 uh, seals. This is what, this is what came from H&H, &H, you got me? So the part with the in, that's inside of there, the part that's inside of there, let me put the light on part that's inside of there that actually has the spring on it that goes inside to the crankcase okay and then you should just have the smooth part facing out on e on either end but you can actually see that little shiny spring in there that goes inside to the inside of the motor okay so I'm gonna put a little bit of oil in the center of these and then stick them on put the case together I'll be back Okay, you guys can see there's the new seal setting on the on the outsides right there getting ready to put to go back into their space it was like you just put a little oil on them and then slide them slide them into position so I'm gonna take and put RTV right now all the way through here and I do take and I put a little bit down in here you can barely see right down in here where this where the seal goes and then I'll just take and I'll lift this up over and then get the bottom part and I'll go back and do the do the top part I'll show you right when I put the halves together okay you guys so there it is come on focus dog on it there it is it has everything on there we'll try to zoom back out okay so I'm just I'm kind of suspending it because I don't want to get it all I don't want to get it all over my fingers. I don't want to get it all over everything. So now I'm just kind of rotating this back down in here. I don't know as if I'm going to be able to to do all of this and still do the the filming. Feels like that seals need to go out just a squidge. There. See, dog got it. He got a little bit on my thumb. Here we go. It's down. It's in position. The seal. Let's see. So we can show you. The seal looks good. It's gonna get compressed and be right and be right where it needs to be. 
See what I'm saying? It's got a little bit of RTV coming out. There's nothing on the bearing. This one over here. Let's double check the other side. Yep. Little RTV right there. It looks like it's yep, it looks like it's in good position right there. So now we're gonna put the clamshell on. Print the long. The one with the hole. There's the long shaft where the clutch will go. This piece goes on just like that. Can you see it? Then we got a little bit squishing out. The seals are all where they want to be. We need to double check this top one. When it gets pinched in, I want to double. I want to double check this one. So, all right. I gotta. I gotta actually got to do the work. I can't film anymore. But you get the idea. Okay. I'm going to put the motor in here just a little bit. Okay, you guys, so I'm starting to lose the light. You can see that um, to put the engine in, I wanted to show you this. Remember the, the part I was telling you about, like where the, the oil pump is going to go? Then that hole right there, that's why it's important that you get the, the bottom of the crankcase on there correctly so that you're going to be able to, to take and mount that up and... That's where all like the worm drive pieces go and everything to, in order to make the pump work. But to get the motor in this far or the engine, you can see that there's these the little slots. I can just let it let it fall out. There's across the bottom. There's mounting bolts. There's one right there, right there, and then the two from the top. Let me get this out of the way. The two from the top, one over here, and then one right down there and so it literally does it just kind of slides right into its slot so you're going to take this the long shaft and then there's that the air the intake and then that piece hanging down right there right here that's the intake manifold boot that just it just goes on there and then this cover hold, holds it once it's in place but anyways take to, to get in to get in there long side and then let me see if I can do this one-handed. It just slides. I take the zoom out. It's all the way out. Dang it! It just it slides right in there. You look at it from the next, from the other side. Make sure you got the, make sure you got the oil pump in there, and just push it in. You don't need to watch me put in. I'm gonna put in the secure it from the bottom two, and then from the top two. I'll be back. Okay, guys, this will probably be the last sh shot of the night. So remember when I was telling you about that, that air impulse line that came off the, the side of the crankcase? Well, I, I put the, the new impulse line on there. I had to make, make some. But because it's not hard plastic, it's not as hard as the other stuff is, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and make a little guard for it. I'm going to take and, like wind up some real skinny wire and put that around the outside to hopefully help help it to dissipate heat because it's got to come up through here and then what it does is like it connects underneath see that little nipple sticking out right there in the very center of your screen so that in turn comes up through here where the, where the, the carburetor goes and if I can find that part remember when we took it apart that's that impulse line that sets in that sets right directly inside of there. It just has a just has a hole. God dang it. It just has a hole in the back of it. So it'll receive it when it's in there. When it goes in, in there like that. So the the piece that we took off, remember I put the hook in there? And you know, I'm like, hey man, you know, if that thing's leaking air, that'll cause a, a piston or a you know, a cylinder to get scored because, oh, I almost had that. Did you see that? There's the, that's the rip in the old one. Right there. That's the rip in it. And it was setting in there just like this. Okay. So anyways, so now we have to worry about the, the clearance, the tolerance. This is, the flywheel goes only in one way. Uh, because of the key, 
So it goes right there, and look at the look at the tolerance that I left for when that flywheel passes. See that right where that that new impulse line is. I'm going to get a straight on shot right there. See from the brass to the hose, it's probably like ten or twenty thousandths. But it has to be that way. It has to be that close in order to still be able to do its job and to still have the clearance. Look at that. Can you see that? I might pull it back just a hair. There is like zero tolerance, zero clearance. Ooh, look at that. It's going to hit that nub. Yep, i got to move it back just a squidge. Very center of your screen, that nub is hitting that new hose. See it moving it? So I got to take care of that. Maybe I'll just cut a little block out of there. But Okay, that's it for tonight, guys. It's getting dark. It's like 730, running out of light. I'm still going to do a few more things. Maybe I'll take some still shots and just do a voiceover on it. But, yep, we're making progress. Thanks for watching. Okay, I lied. I'm going to do an, an, one more clip. So now I've gone and I've put the coil back in there. And everybody should have one of these. This is a business card. Then you want to take them, put inside of here to go and set the the air gap. So it goes between the flywheel on both those armatures. It helps if you have the magnet pushed off to the side. Let's make sure that this is down in here, right there. We're on both sides, one side right there, one side right there. And now I'm just going to take, usually if you can get the able to come around the magnet see it watch 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 the coil see how it pulls it itself in so that means the magnets coming around it's trying to move the card we want it the other side to pull through too now the other side is down so that just set the gap so we can take and torque these babies right here so they don't jump like my camera's doing and I don't know why they do this with this wire. Everybody else have trouble with that that one little kill wire right there. When you when you go to tighten it up, it wants to turn. So hold on. I'm just holding that wire with my finger while I'm turning it to torque it down. And it turned. That's all right. It is what it is, right, guys? Okay. So all I did was like I tightened this, but I was holding that wire to go straight so it wouldn't turn out. And then the same th with this one over here, I just held it. So now you should be able to just take and turn this, that it has the, the gap, the clearance or whatever. Pull the card out, and now there it, there it is. There's your air gap, ten thousandths. It's set. Okay? All right, guys, I'm trying to be as anal, I mean, uh, as detailed as possible. So if I left something out or I did something wrong, well, I know if I did something wrong, somebody's going to start bitching, but um, if I left something out, let me know. <laughs> yeah, this is taking a long time. Wow, that's bright. So when I went and I um, set the air gap and everything for the coil, uh, this is the the flywheel nut, and it's on there as tight as I could tighten it, you know, by just just holding the flywheel. When I show you, because I'm going to impact it on there to make sure that it doesn't get loose. And this is how I do it. So if you're gonna you're gonna you're looking right down inside the cylinder. See right there, like in the, down the spark plug hole. You're gonna you're gonna watch. I don't know if I can get to the right angle. Hold on. Maybe a little focus would help, eh? I don't know. But anyways, if it's too far down, we're going to take a put a put a string in there like a pull rope just so what's going to happen as you can see. Isn't it, look at all that beautiful oil down in there. See the piston coming up? See the piston coming up in there? What we're going to do is like we're going to take and we're going to put whoops, sorry. We're going to take and put string inside of there so when the piston comes up it's got something that it, it can't move out of the way but it's not going to be hard and it's not going to deform or damage the piston so i just i want it to be down just far enough so that 
when I feed this rope in there, I'll try to do it um, so you can watch. And we don't want to, we just don't want, don't want to snag a port. Let me so, put this on the tripod and then maybe we can do this. Give me a second, you guys. I'm going to turn this like this. Try to do the zoom. Right there. Okay. So now I can't see what I'm doing. I'm hoping that I'm just going to catch it. All right. So I'm going to keep going and start feeding this rope in there. Oh, God. Where's my little... My little red pliers. I mean, how important is it to do the rope? But I'm trying to be thorough. So I know I probably got about, I don't know, what, maybe three quarters of an inch of, of travel that I can do. You know, you're getting a great view of the back of my hand. But I'm just taking, pushing like a half an inch of rope inside that cylinder each time until I just think that I got enough. Okay, that probably, probably has to do, that's enough. All right, so there's the rope. You can actually kind of see it, it's co it's all coiled up inside of there. Now I'm gonna take and rotate the flywheel. Zoom back out, watch my hand over here in the top left. I'm gonna rotate the flywheel so it's coming towards and now it won't move anymore. Okay, so that means that it's already, it's the rope is all squished up down in there I can go like this done I don't want to blast it and try to because you can strip a thread on those easy now just take watch the hand of the top left I'm gonna back that off just a little bit that lets the piston goes go back down it relieves all the pressure that on the rope and we just take the rope out. Nothing snagged. And that's a good sign. See, because I put a lot of oil in that cylinder because obviously you don't want metal to metal. So it's picking up the, that oil. And I will probably give it a blast. Or I might fog it with mystery oil when we first started up just to make sure that everything's getting a ton of oil. Everything got a lot of that. Uh, what do you call it? This Castor 927 that I like to use. It's the same thing that's going to get mixed with the gas at 40 to 1, uh, 50 to 1. It's made for, uh, what do you call them, air-cooled engines, and it works really well. Red Max is another good one. I just, I like these, these caster blends. So, this is all tight now. I took it, I got, when I put the coil back in there, that little side door goes. Let's see, show you. There's a coil like that that you got to remember to put this little side side door in here. It just slides right in. These grommets all go in a very specific place. Put the ignition or the spark plug lead back in there. That goes back into it right there. Hopefully that's focusing a little bit. There, here's the grommet for the the coil. The wire, it, it weaves right between these little, these three little lugs. And then it comes up here. There is another grommet. Get the heck out of the way. There's another grommet for the electrical wires right there to keep those out of place. They do, steel does a very good job of keeping this stuff out of the way. So now we can take and put the cover back on this. Um, probably might have to come back and revisit it when I have to take and hook up that primer, but I just want to, I want, I don't want anything else getting in here for right now. It'll help clear up the bench a little bit, putting that powered on, get these four bolts in there. Um, and then next we're going to be working on is, uh, hooking up the, the carburetor, putting that intake boot in, getting this, we have to trim this. This is that, that new line right here. We have to trim this. Uh, for the impulse, get that all lined up and everything, and then just whatever. Probably got about another, I don't know, two hours of filming and working, but on in all honesty, probably about another 40 minutes of regular work. So, and we got to hook up all the wires and stuff. Sorry about that. We got to hook up all the wires for the, the kill switch and whatnot. So, 
Not too bad. We're making progress. She's all ready to rock and roll. She's going to be a screamer. All right. Thanks, guys. Okay, guys. So we're back at it again. I put that cover plate on there, and I filmed it, and I went back to review it, and it's gone. I don't know why the phone shut off. But anyways, hey, I'm getting ready to take him, put this clutch back on. The the worm drive for the um what do you call it for the the bar oiler that's already back back in there put that on is that light on i don't know if that's better or not anyways so now it goes see those little that little star pattern on the back of the the clutch there where the chain actually rides and then you see these little the same basic star pattern right there make sure we focus I'm afraid to use the light. The phone will shut off. This has to go and line up right in that star pattern because when you squeeze the, tr the throttle and the clutch actually engages, that's what makes this thing spin so that your bar is not constantly being oiled. You can do it one of two ways. You can take and slide this little roller bearing cage in there. Put that on there first. Put this on here. You'll feel it when it clicks in. You'll see it drop in for the, um, what do you call it? Screw it. We'll just use the light. If it dies, it dies, right? And so now when the clutch engages, that spins, it oils. Here's the clutch. It has like, there's the hex pattern right there, but see the, it's not, it's actually what? One, two, three, four, five, yeah. Anyways, it's not raised on one side. It's raised on the other side. That raised side goes to the outside. And it goes on, um, what do you call it? Opposite. You know, Righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. And actually, I think if you look on there, there's a, the thing that says off. I think there's supposed to be an arrow for there. But anyways, I just spin it backwards like this. And because I have the impact... I'm going to put the, the impact on there and just put it in reverse and, just, and hold the flywheel. It's a self-tightening thing. The engine spins in this direction. Tightening would be this, so it's always tightening itself. So if you don't have a, a an electric impact like I do, then remember what you just saw me do for uh, the other side to do the flywheel. You're going to have to take and put the rope down inside the the cylinder and then you can just use a regular ratchet wrench you know in a socket and just you know torque it on there so okay i'll be back hopefully i won't lose any more footage it's going to be another hot day but for time before noon it won't be too bad okay guys i gotta run out and go do another job but um this one to show you a little bit of more progress that i make this is why i was talking about how steel does such a good job of keeping everything you know up and out of the way I think they do a really good job of that every hose has a little place where it where it goes where it's supposed to be not that and so um, I took and I stuck the the intake manifold in down there there's nothing to it there's no clamps or anything basically you just take and you, you fit it over that um, the part on the engine that you've seen so many times before in this video and then if you get this lined up pretty much straight up and down the way that it's supposed to be this that little metal piece right there will take and hold this because that's what's important is that little pulse tube right there so it'll hold that into position so if you're off by just a squidge which I was so I kind of wanted to be down there a little bit See how it's off by just a hair? This will hold it. You can't be off by a lot. Try to be as, as exact as you possibly can when you're putting it in there. But, yeah, that'll help you out right there. And then once, I can't do it with one hand. Because I was, I take and I slide my fingers up underneath the, the back of here. I don't know if you can see them. No, the shadow. And once you get it in, in line, you should be able to just go and this... That little collar right there is the same outside diameter as that right there. So you can just take and push this down and that will hold that 
into position there just like that that makes that part there installed so now we're gonna come we have uh, the pulse line is connected the fuel line is been inserted in through the back remember that that's where the, the carburetor piece it just goes and it just it drops right into that hole for the fuel line and then there's a vent that's somebody else put that's it's not the, the the normal vent cap for it but it'll work it's still a vent and again steel put these these little um, hose um, guides for where to take and put stuff so good job on that all right guys so it's gonna be carburetor I should probably put the plug in there now um, and then we're gonna come back we're gonna do all the linkages and stuff and yeah we're almost there thanks for sticking with me